guys here from Paxa Rubiana. This is from Linz, my hometown. I want to show you a bit of Linz as well. It's actually a very nice place, but you know, it's a little bit run down. It was always like this and the center, it's not, it's not as good. You know, socialist government, of course, and then they had done a lot of neglect in the inner city and that's not very good. You know, you see the places, petrol stations, a sex shop, it's not, you know, not as good as it could be. I call for European Linz to be a stronger economic actor for a new development of this city. And I think a new kind of a launch of a more interesting and more European style of development with urban revitalization. Many of the cities in Southeastern Europe I've seen, they have been revitalized now in the last years. And Skodra, Korcha, they don't, they look actually much better than Linz now. Huh? You know, Linz is of course developing as well, but when I look around and I see, okay, there's a lot of private wealth here, but the city is not as clean as it could. The regional development concept, which we have seen in Southeastern Europe so successful in the last years, yeah, they should also be used here. The inner city revitalization, yes. Linz could be much better and much more European in a sense. The problem is, of course, it is not enough people here. People are moving out, the richer people, and the inner cities, they have not the integration systems that they could be because of the restrictive immigration policy of the last years. This was one of the biggest mistakes of the Kurz government to restrict labor supply into Austria. A tragic mistake. Of course, since the party has moved to populism and protectionism, the People's Party and Austria is very like succumbing to this xenophobic reflexes, then you see the reality is like that. And that's a big problem. So we need a more open lens. We need, of course, an open labor market. We need to integrate the people of Southeastern Europe much more and of Ukraine. And after a decade of protectionist failure and closing everything, it's time to change the policy not all responsibility of Linz. There were also major mistakes made in Linz in terms of financial management and urban underdevelopment and lesser lack of integration agenda. That's all. And lack of urban vision for Linz. That's all a major problem. Of course, cannot all be addressed by Pax Europeana, but it could be better here. It could be better. What I hope is that the partnership with Mitrovica and with uh, El Bazan, that is very good, will also very be uh, positive for Linz, because there will be also hopefully some learning curve how to be better and how to develop more effectively and how to also integrate more people, make them feel welcome. And so we all care for each other in one united Europe. That would be good, including Albania, including Kosovo, including Ukraine. The opportunities from Ukraine when they will come now and they will as European Ukraine will be integrated that will be very effective and I'm very much looking forward you see you uh, Linz is booming in the construction sector actually that's very good and there was some effort made it's just some neglected areas that's one of the things they have good public transport here and uh, the private sector is really booming it's just a lack of planning vision here, which is the problem, and of integration vision. And that's one of the things. And of course, Linz is hurted by the general Austrian policy of uh, protectionism, of a lack of um, uh, clean energy vision. That is the problem. We are talking now 20 years for an uh, energy transition. And now in the war with Ukraine, we are surpri surprised that we haven't done it. Yeah? It's very disturbing. Yeah? And that's, of course, one of the problems here. You know, 20 years now talking about energy, clean and green. And <laughs> now we are surprised that we had to cut off gas and oil. Yeah? I mean, <laughs> it's like an irony here. <laughs> I mean, this is really very hard. Also, that Linz is, of course, a victim of the protectionist trade policy. Because imagine if they would have done TTIP, it would have been much richer, this city. But of course, you can rile up the people against America if you are in the service of Russia. 
then you riled them up against America and you were against free trade because you were a left-wing nationalist, a socialist or nationalist, you rile them up. That's what you do as a socialist and nationalist against America. And that's what many of the irresponsible, reckless politicians have done here. And then you add up, then you have the problem of the, the labor market. The decade of closing the labor market, especially since after 2015, has been devastating, of course, for the industrial core of Upper Austria. And you increase, of course, inflationary pressures by making yourself completely dependent on one energy source. Now it falls away. They use the energy weapons against us. But the real people responsible for this mess is the ones who made us so dependent on one source despite our better knowledge, because I was fighting for 20 years for energy independence from Russia. We all knew <laughs> that Putin is not good. I mean, it's not a secret. And then we have, of course, done the energy, then the trade. Mercosur is signed since 2019, and it's still not ratified. And still they're not even in force. The Canadian agreement is in force, yes, but of course, the high tax policy is also a major problem for the small companies because how to earn such a high taxation level? It's utterly ridiculous what is happening here. So taxation, labor market and trade policy. Of course, Linz is a victim of the general trends which are everywhere in Austria. But additionally, specifically here, the attitude is rather not so welcoming, unfortunately and the integration efforts have to be made much more convincing. And also the feeling of shared ownership of the city's destiny has also to be improved. That's absolutely vital. I will now show you the main street. This is my traditional walk through the town. It's a very beautiful city and I will try to bring some of the aspects what I learned in Southeastern Europe and in Brussels back to the city now via my friends. And that's one of my plans behind this activity today, which I will share with you in the coming hours. And I will also tell you what I think about Linz, how to improve it, how to make sure Linz is more European and how to get active in the coming years here for a more European Linz. Yes, it's beautiful here in Linz. It's, uh, you know, Goethe, Schiller, Mozart. They have all the main... Uh, Goethe? <laughs> Schiller Park? <laughs> Mozart? That's the way it works here. It's very beautiful. And I like it a lot. I try not to cross and not to be run over. And while showing you my beautiful hometown, I like it. Linz is very beautiful, but of course it's somehow haunted by the history of this tragic disaster. Of course, everybody who talks about Linz in English in YouTube has to address this because he went to school here. But, you know, we somehow have nothing else to do. He was not born here. <laughs> he tried to be buried here, actually, up on the hill. I showed you in another video this kind of tra tragic legacy. But the reputation of Linz is forever shattered by this fact that somebody went to school here. He was then anyhow moving to Vienna and then to Munich. So <laughs> I don't know why we are so under the shadow. And we should somehow overcome that by more openness and somehow a better policy, especially not uh, supporting dictators. <laughs> You know, because that's what, of course, many of the business leaders here, the politicians, they do that, yeah. They are still supporting Putin. And that's also one of the things which I think is utterly unacceptable and has to change. Like calls, like huh, how to support the, whatever, the remove the sanctions. That was what many of the business leaders and politicians in Linz and Upper Austria have done since the war started in 2014. I have not forgotten and I will remind them because that was utterly unacceptable obviously and it was a big mistake. When I was in Ukraine, how often I called them oh, to support Ukraine more or do something for Ukraine, come to open the trade markets, the 
agriculture market would have been so cool and was so logical that there is a lot of opportunities for the agriculture, the SMEs, for the whole system to integrate the industry and the agricultural system of Ukraine with Upper Austria. And I've written many letters about this to all the people I know and they were utterly uninterested. Whenever, you know, there is even Ukrainians, also Austrians living in Ukraine, there were uh, settlers in the Carpathian. They are to, still today speaking German in Ukraine and there are a lot of German speakers in the Black Sea area, in Kherson. Kherson Germans, Black Sea Germans. Huh? They are all from Upper Austria mostly and they are relatives of course, 10 generations before. But we were not interested. I asked Mr. Puringer to be the coordinator for the Black Sea region. <laughs> it was not me to offer this, but it was a really very good idea. I sent a beautiful letter to him. He replied, I'm unfortunately very busy and not interested in Ukraine, because Ukraine, we are not interested. And then we see that by the consequences of our inaction and our inability to integrate Ukraine, in the European Union when we could. We will anyhow have to do it now. But in the meantime, we have to pay for all the damages. We have all the consequences of the agricultural and energy crisis. And we still have to integrate Ukraine because there was never any alternative to that. And that was very clear from 2015 onwards. <laughs> and I said it very clearly. I wrote letters to everybody. I wrote articles and tweets and Facebook, but I was ignored. And now the utter shattering consequences of the Ukraine war are back in our faces in full brutality in 2022. And we can of course say, oh, why? Oh, ah, oh, what happened? Why? We didn't know. Nobody told us. Uh, I was not warned. <laughs> yes, that's just not correct. <laughs> because everybody who is on my timeline definitely had the opportunity to learn and definitely refused to learn and it's all the upper Austrian politicians on my timeline on my friendship on my tweets and I told them very clearly that this is the case they rejected and now we have the complete mess in eight years of war we have done so little and we have achieved so big zero and now the costs are enormous the consequences are tragic and still after one trillion of course we are in the big mess of this situation in 2022 yeah this is the way we shouldn't do things but policy of no debate, hello Mr. Neyama, of no discussions, hello Mr. Neyama, of staying everything as it should be, because we are afraid of the future. That leads, of course, to a complete breakdown once the other actors are behaving a bit differently. And that's exactly what happened. So here I am now at Klosterhof, but I'm a bit early. I will maybe that's a very historic building. I will show you a little bit more of beautiful Linz in the run-up of my activity because I'm already now showing you. Why not? <laughs> oh, you're ready? <laughs> this is Linz. It's a very nice place. This is the main shopping center. Interestingly enough, when you see this is the old standard buildings of Vienna before, of Linz before. Linz, Vienna. <laughs> Linz, the second biggest city actually. Then you see here the old infrastructure. Here you see a new building that's renovated now but that's a typical kind of a um, from the World War II because Linz was heavily damaged completely destroyed as the city of the big bad guy and then he was of course also industrial asset so these places they were all then basically shattered and then they were reconstructed now it's already a very nice shopping center Linz is very prosperous in the center, it's just that their kind of urban development is directed very much to the center and they have neglected uh, to really do something decent. That's of course one of the main banks here. 
That's one of the shopping centers. The center is now really very much the pedestrianized. Here's a typical city with a uh, street, light streetcar. Here, Straßenbahn, Linz an der Straßenbahn, they call it. They have all these slogans, good or bad. But this center has, it's a, actually a Austria, it's quite affluent. But when you see, for example, that the average GDP in Upper Austria now, that's the region here, is about 125. Huh? And you have Romania, <laughs> a Bucharest region, at 145, Budapest the same, and you have even then Prague is at 175 of the EU GDP average. That you see that we have missed out here, missed out because of lack of vision on economic development. The region is now somewhere at 0.73, but the attitude of the political elite is to be about the best. <laughs> You know, but from the best region economically in Europe. Here, obviously, there's long time. It was never a chance because of geography and history. But uh, the rich regions of Belgium, the Netherlands, France. Well, France is also problematic. But of course, of Western Germany, the really rich Rhine Valley. It's uh, now here, basically, that's far behind, lacking in economic prosperity. But could be much better, of course, if the opportunities being a hub for Ukraine and the Balkans would be lifted. Linz has an opportunity because of the Danube, because of the infrastructure connectivity to Germany. Here much could be done, but unfortunately it is not because the things are as they are, because here there's great happiness with itself. <laughs> There's very great happiness. This is the regional government. I will make a, you the small tour and then I will go to the regional government for a moment to make my protest note about the lack of Europeanness. And I will show you just the whole city in this small tour. And then I think I will make it. I see the city is with this tramway very efficient, you know. Of course, what is missing would be some kind of underground mobility. They have just a little bit of underground mobility. For a city of 200,000, you could go into some kind of improvement, but they have decided not to do that. And that's of course missing because the tramway has only this kind of capacity and is always blocked, of course, in the pedestrian streets. So that's not the most efficient way to organize the public transport. But it's a good way and it's at least there. And of course, there is the lack of vision to really remove all the cars from the pedestrian area. That would be much better. And also on the main square, there are still cars. And that's, of course, utterly unnecessary. So there is a lack of strategic vision. But it's a beautiful town here at the Danube. I like it a lot. And of course, here there could be much more European thinking and that would be really very good. Over there is the Danube. It's of course the lifeline of Ukraine and European connectivity via the Dnipro. And here this needs to be also lifted in the future. And I will talk a bit about that one in one of my next videos. Yeah. This is just to give you the impression here, a beautiful uh, restorated and renovated and amazing. And that's very good actually. Here the center for one of the past plagues. They have erected this to say thank you to the authorities and to the Lord, of course, for being delivered from the plague. It's a very beautiful city. I like it, I'll show you most of it. Now you just have a good impression about the city itself, my hometown where I grew up. And I will continue to entertain you. It's a nice lifestyle here. It's a beautiful city. I like it very much. And I will promote more Europeanness of Linz. Because unfortunately, it's far from European in its governance and in its effort. And that would be good to change, I think, so. Time for European lens. <laughs> it's absolutely like that. So, I will show you much of it. 
and also give you an impression and make two more videos before my meeting agenda will start. Very good, bravo Linz. And more to come here from Paxa Rubiana, from my hometown. Thanks a lot. Bye.